Welcome back carvers. If you're just joining me, this is the next in a series of carve along videos that I make to help people learn how to carve stamps. My name is Joe and I'm a stamp maker and today we have carve along number three, which is hot on the heels of the last carve along, which was the welcome to, or, um, was the holidays edition. This one is the final holidays edition and I have two different sizes on the carve along page of designs that you can try out either for a smaller card or bigger one or you could even scale these on your computer to make a size that works for you and if you are a carve along member this will already be in your inbox if you'd like to join these are free uh, it has some tips some links to the materials and supplies and comes to your email anytime I release one of those videos so there's a link down for that in the subscription and like I said it's free so today I thought it'd be fun to try something a little bit more challenging Challenging for the end of the year. I believe in you all. I know you can do it. So we're gonna try both negative and positive lettering in this stamp and um, What I thought would be fun is to actually use a kind of ink that is Opaque so it'll actually be that we're stamping white onto a darker color um, In this case a card. So this is stays on opaque, which is interesting And I'll show you how you use that a little bit later and I am going to use my favorite Carving material. This one was actually a gift. Isn't that a nice holiday gift for a stamp carver? A friend of mine, he went to Japan and he brought back some of this carving material for me, and isn't that just the nicest thing ever? So, this is from Japan, and um, there'll be a link below where you can get um, multiple slabs of this, and it's it's actually a really. I'll show you why I like it so much. We're going to use both knives and gouges in this video, so I have all of those ready. And um, yeah, so let's get started. So the card that I actually am going to make out of this, because that's what I want to do with this design, is to create a holiday card, is about this size. And I got this, I think, at Michael's. And it's green on the outside, nice and white. And I think that this size right here will look great for it. So I'm going to carve with this one. If you're really nervous about carving these letters, don't be, but you can try a larger size. It's easier to carve the letters when they're bigger than when they're smaller, so you can try this one instead. As always, my favorite way to get a design onto rubber is with my acetone um, method with a laser printer, so I'm just going to put this aside. What I have with me is a little bit of acetone. I printed this using a Brother printer. Um, you can check out my blog or other videos if you wanna see how to do this if you haven't done it before. But essentially, as long as you use the right type of toner printer, you can actually use just regular acetone, which I have here, to transfer it onto the rubber. So, this stuff. So you can, whatever curving material you'd like to use will work. Um, I just thought it would be nice to use my favorite one because this is the holidays. So this is a really cool uh, version of, of rubber. It's actually black, um, the, the bulk of it, and then it's, I know it might look white, it's actually a, a really light gray. You can sort of see it's only about a millimeter thick on it. And this whole thing is covered, covered in uh, powder of some kind and I think that's to keep it from getting gross while it's in shipping so the one thing if you use this and the cool thing about these seed materials is it comes with tracing paper and it comes with a design sheet if you want to get started making stamps and how cute is that so um, if you're interested in that, that carving material the links in my in my description so before you want to transfer this you, you should actually wipe it down to get rid of that powder because the toner is a powder and the powder won't stick to powder it just for any type of carving material if you have um, anything that's powdery on it a transfer won't work very well unless it's like a pencil transfer so I just use a little bit of cotton and I have just pure acetone here and that's what I use to clean off the powder like that so and actually when you do that it makes it, I'm not sure if you can see it there, it gives it a little bit 
of a different look on it. But anyway. Sorry about that, the cat needed to be fed. So uh, after you've cleaned the block, all you need to do with your piece of um, your design is laying it flat down. You take just a little bit of pure acetone on the cotton sheet and you wipe it down. You've got enough if you see the, the sheet go clear on the, um, on the back and then you just slowly peel it up and the design will be transferred. Now you can see on this one, it's sort of got a little blotchy, but that's okay. We can still see the design and we know that uh, the happy is going to be carved out and that that piece will be black. So it's no big deal. So next step is, is I like to actually cut that out of this block. Uh, I don't do that first because if you don't transfer this well, I actually, you can uh, use acetone to remove it. Um, but in this case, it worked great. So I've just got a regular, this is a, an Ulfa brand box cutter that I use and I am going to cut it on my cutting mat like that. Put that aside for another project and I'll leave the sides for now, although all of that will be cleared out. So. If you haven't carved text before, it can seem very intimidating. And like I said, you can use um, a larger design for a larger card. For this video, I'm just going to show you how to carve out those letters with um, my retractable Exacto. And uh, I like this one because uh, I don't need a cap for it, which I can lose, but also I can retract this um, and make it safe again without um, 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 using another hand. So. I always try to carve the hardest parts first. So, um, the <laughs> just so you're aware, it's harder to carve in the positive for text than in the negative. And what does that mean? So, the positive parts of a stamp are the parts that are sticking up that will be covered in ink and then stamped. So when we're done this stamp, the holidays is all gonna stick up into the air so that it can be covered in ink. The happy is the opposite. We're carving that into the rubber so that the surrounding area, so the parts carved away are the negative space and the car parts left are positive space. Okay, so there's a technical language. In essence though, it is easier to carve pieces out because you don't have to worry about these little pieces getting wiggly and falling out. So if you want to, you can carve that part first while I'm carving this one if you feel a little nervous. I carve it the opposite way and here's why. Let's say I mess up a whole bunch of this, then I'll know that right at the start and then I can you know, cut that away and reuse this piece because again, this can be, the design can be removed with a little bit more acetone and I can save the rubber. Um, but if you're living on the edge, feel free to cover, cut that first. So how do I cut my letters? I do that, uh, I have another video about this and um, it's, <laughs> In essence, it's like what Michelangelo said, you just cut apart, the, cut the pieces away that aren't the letters and uh, the rest remains. Um, what I do, and this, I've, I've got another technique for swirly letters, but um, in essence, I like to do all the cuts that are on one side of the letter first, and then I turn it 45 degrees and continue cutting. So if you watch what I'm doing right now, I'm cutting 45 degrees in a slant away and I'm doing all the tops, the top edges of any of the letters. So the top edge of this D and then the inside top edge of that part that has to cut out and the little piece there. It's always important when you're carving with a knife to cut on an angle away from the design and so that you're not going underneath the design. If you do go under the design, you're going to sort of destabilize the design and it'll make it harder to, um, it, well, the stamp could come apart. There's the trickiest part of the stamp is right there, is that little S curly Q. So 
So this is, <laughs> if you've seen any of my videos, the seed carving rubber is my absolute favorite um, uh, material to carve. Th the seed company in Japan actually makes um, erasers. So I guess they're a, comp a chemical company of some kind that um, makes similar type, um, you know, whatever this polymer is that they use to make these stamps, they make uh, erasers with it and they've made these dedicated eraser carving blocks. So they, however that translation works, this is sort of from the same formulation that they use to make their erasers. But this, as you carve it, nor as you use it, it doesn't pill up or anything like that the way erases, erasers do. And erasers are supposed to do that because that's how they, they function. But this material is meant for uh, what I'm doing with it right now and um, I think being custom made for this rather than just a material that's jerry-rigged into doing it like uh, a lot of the lino carving materials um, I don't know it just they it has such a, a nice feel to it and it's so it's so smooth to carve and I just um, I love it I should say after I've now gushed about it I have no relationship to this company whatsoever they don't know me uh, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, so my, my opinion on that is my own. So now I've done 45 degrees, I'm going to turn it again and I'm going to do the bottom side. So um, one of the, the tools that I use, and I'm sorry that the light keeps shifting, um, it's winter. I, I live in southern Ontario in Canada and uh, it was a very grey day and I started carving and I thought, oh, this is a great time to make a video. And now the sun suddenly wants to come out while I'm sitting near the window. So hopefully that'll be okay for the video. But um, there's nothing like carving on a quiet, cold day, let me tell you. Um, but yes, yeah, so for carving letters, if this is intimidating you, or if you're carving along and you're having trouble here, the best thing you can do is practice um, and just think about where the tip of that knife is going. You can also do this with a gouge if you feel more comfortable that way. Um, and beyond practice, lots of light and a magnifier. So I can't uh, more strongly recommend having a magnifying um, light on your craft table that you can use while you're carving. Oh, I missed, I missed this right here. No one told me. Uh, yes, a magnifying light on your desk to help you while you carve because um, it will really help you see exactly where the knife is going and where the blade is in relation to the, um, the design that you've put on the carving material. So highly recommend it. Another thing is, um, so I, I love this carving material. This is that black version. This is what they call the hard type. And hard, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know exactly what they mean by that, except that it is harder to carve. Hard, hard as I don't know. Um, but to put it in perspective to the other carving materials that um, you know I've shown on this or. Um, in other videos. So the other one I commonly use is that sandwich material from China. Um, this is very slightly harder than that. It's definitely harder than their own um, material that they um, sell, like seeds regular material. And uh, in terms of Speedball Speedy Carve, the pink stuff, this is definitely harder. Um, and what I like about it compared to Speedy Carve is if you watch on the video as I'm cutting, making these cuts, it's not, the rubber's not trying to move away from the, the cutting implement, so the knife. I find the pink stuff, um, it, it, it moves, it's a bit um, snaky, it tries to get away from, it doesn't want to be cut, whereas this stuff stays still to be cut. So. So let me know in the comments this little curly on the ass how you're how you're making out is it too tight for you did you get it so once I've made all of those cuts around the outside 
and you can see that some of the inside pieces I've already, they were coming out as I was cutting them. Then you go around the outside and this is can sometimes be the harder part because you might want to stick this in too far. So as I'm sticking this knife in and it's going this way into it, you got to consider where the cut was that went out that way. And you're making a V and you want the, the bottom of the V to be out away from the letter, right? And we're curving away in a 45 degree angle. So you're doing it just, you're making the second cut around the outside. So the knife, you can feel as you cut it, you want it to be, you want the bottom of that V to be away from the positive part, if that makes sense. And um, basically this is both easy and harder because you gotta make sure not to cut underneath those sections and you can go around and just uh, sort of liberate all the, the rubber from around where he would now carve. So the hardness of this and how they market it as being harder, whether, you know, it's, a, it's so much a preference thing. Um, you know, I made a recent video about speedy cut and how little I, ha I think about that material. But you know, there's others out there who love that stuff and who use it all the time. Um, this material and the harder version ver versus the um, softer version, I know others who even this hard type is too soft for them and they don't like it um, because they're so used to materials that are um, really hard and that's that's just how they've learned to carve is against that kind of resistance. Um, as you can see, I'm holding this in my hand as I carve it. And because this is soft enough, I, I can recommend that you can do it that way. But if this was some of the hard material, um, like real hard material, I, I, I would actually be carving down on the desk, but that's hard on my back to ca carve that way, so I don't do it. Um, some of that type material, like um, there's some material that's made in the U.S. Um, a wonderful uh, lady runs her shop Stampies, and they have had um, a number of different types of material, like Oz Cut, uh, NZ Cut. Um, they were the original designers of PZ Cut, which you, which you can't get anymore. Um, but those are quite a bit harder. Particularly, they had one even called Firm Cut, and. Uh, I don't like those for holding in my hand the way I'm doing because from a safety perspective and you always want to be safe, you don't want to cut yourself, these are sharp implements, It you're putting so much pressure that if the knife skips out of the rubber, it's going to land right into your hand. Whereas right now, this is so soft that the knife isn't going anywhere, even if the knife is not as sharp as it should be. But like I said, I always recommend using a a new or very, very sharp blade for doing these kind of carvings. Sharp knife is a safer knife. So just food for thought. Do you have any carving material that is your favorite? Um, let me know, because I like to try new ones. I'm always on the lookout for new carving materials. I will literally <laughs> pay ridiculous shipping fees to have carving material come to me from around the world. I love trying new stuff. Um, there's um, some material out of Germany, and I think it's blue, and I think it's called Fractal or Fractus or something along those lines. Have any of you guys tried that? That's on my, my to-do list to try. Um, I also, oh geez, what else is out there? I haven't tried yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm always on the search for new carving material. And there, holidays, happy holidays. Okay, so now we're going to carve some happy. So like I said, if, if that had got messed up, I could cut that off of the bottom and then I'd still have a nice big slab of material to use. But I didn't, which is good news. So let's carve the happy. So in the opposite way where we're carving out away from the design over here, we actually have to carve towards the middle here. And it's not as, um, <laughs> fraught with danger if you uh, the pieces aren't gonna fall out 
but uh, I essentially like to carve the same way where I carve all the one side for all the letters of a word and then I turn I turn the material and uh, do each 45 degree rotation separately so with this <laughs> this I'm finding a little harder to carve particularly the way I'm filming this um, I would definitely be doing this size under my micro or my microscope my magnifier because um, with how dark the material is and how dark the um, the material is underneath I, I'm having a little bit of a hard time seeing where my blade is because um, you can clip some of it off or some of it um, improperly but I chose a style of lettering that is a little bit more rustic and will hopefully lend well to this style of or uh, to something if it's not as uh, perfect that's my hope anyway we will see I haven't tried out this design yet so the reason I, I carve one side of a letter at a time for all of the letters and then turn it is that you waste a lot of time <laughs> turning it and readjusting and getting your um, your hold and your um, see and as you get some of this done it'll all come out So when you get three sides done and you're doing the negative like this, um, don't try not to see these pieces. They they really want to come out, but you don't have that last cut done on the the last side. And if you uh, cut it, it will um, it will be sort of ragged, and uh, that's not not what the design looks like. So just it's okay to lift it, but don't let it. Uh, rip at the bottom rather than a purposeful cut or else or else or else you're out of the club so winter is on its way where I am in Canada and uh, it's getting cold but the snow hasn't f flown yet that's coming soon, I can tell. You can smell it in the air. I love going outside at this time of year and people have got their fireplaces going. I don't have one. And, uh, but I, when I go outside, I can smell that other people have their fires going and I love it. Just love it. There, first letter done. And if you miss some pieces, um, you can go back in and sort of add a little cut to it. So you can see there, particularly when the as the light moves how it's different <sighs> but I have to say as much as I like the winter I love the summer I love the fall I think fall is my favorite time of year and uh, with the strange weather we've had this year we haven't really had a proper fall it sort of skipped right over fall the leaves didn't turn um, it skipped red there was no reds this year it had a very yellow uh, leaves year. I live in an area that you get a lot of the changes in colors with the deciduous trees. And I miss that. So we kind of missed out on the fall. So there we go. And almost just like that, we have the oh, middle of that Y I didn't want to come out. And there you go. So you have happy done as well. So all the text is done. It's all the, I'm going to call it the hard parts. So I'm going to retract this knife and I'm going to move to my, my number one gouge. So if you look here on the back, uh, if you can see it there, that is the number one gouge tip, which is for Speedball their smallest tip. And that's what I'm going to use now for carving some of these trees. So the transfer smeared a little bit there. Um, you can even see it right here where it's smeared. Um, right there and I, the best part about this design is, is it kind of doesn't 
matter because um, it, these are jagged edges for trees. So let me show you a technique for how to make an, a jagged edge with a gouge tip. So typically when you wanna make a, a clean cut, you just move forward like that and then it creates a, a smooth line. But if you wanna create a nice jagged line like that, you can rock back and forth instead of pushing forward. And you can see that the, um, the little nurdle that came out is nice and, uh, oh, it will focus, jagged. So is the cut. And that's what I'm gonna do to help give this jagged edge to these trees because you don't have to be perfect with that and then you can carve this faster by, by doing that. So I'm gonna do it from top to bottom. And I'm just going to, like I said, I'm just gonna use this rocking motion to go from the tree tops out. I don't so much mind winter, like I said, it's the spring. It's when it's cold and damp and kind of gray for, you know, long periods of time. It just, it uh, makes it a little, little unpleasant. Don't like it, it's kind of dreary. But at the beginning of winter, when you have all that perfect white snow and it's so, it's like a fairy tale picture, like all the postcards show you, that's uh, that's the kind of winter that people like, but um, yeah, not always what you get, right? But I know based on the subscriptions for my videos and also I get a bit of a tracker to show where people are from, that there are people subscribed to this and who are watching these videos from all over the world. And I know a lot of places in the world, they don't have the four seasons like where I live. And uh, I've always wondered what that's like to live somewhere where you don't get winter and then spring and then this weird fall and all the trees dump their leaves, start again for the next year. That's such a staple of, of how I and other people around here live and other people don't have that. I think that's really interesting. If you live somewhere that uh, you don't get the seasons, what you must have some kind of seasons different times of year. Tell me about it. I'd love to hear. By doing this uh, rocking technique as well, the kind of cuts you're making will be the same across the whole tree line, and uh, at least they'll be they'll be consistent, which is good. And uh, the good thing about this design is that it's not about having perfection because these are sort of silhouettes of the tree, so. You can rock harder back and forth or just little wiggles. Make a different type of. Okay, so we're almost done the wiggles. Wiggling is done. Then I'm gonna go back and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clear some of this out because I'm gonna go in with a, a bigger gouge to help clear out some of those areas that are a little um, bigger because it'll take forever if I do it with this particular gouge tip. If you haven't been to my channel before and you've been curving with speedball gouges and you're like what on earth is that chick using as a handle? I am actually using a calligraphy pen handle. <laughs> so if you do a lot of 
stamp carving with the gouges. Um, there is a hashed, a metal grill. It's a hashed kind of turny thing. It's a, it's a locking me mechanism to help hold the gouge tip in. And um, if you're holding the gouge like I am, your, your fingers are on it. So this is what that looks like. It's on this hash here. And that after a while, when you're carving like this, it hurts. <laughs> It'll leave like you get a blister or get really sore fingers and it's because this is actually meant to be held like this where you're holding this in the palm of your hand and pushing through really hard materials for, for lin linoleum and uh, it's not really ergonomically designed to be held like this so I use um, this which is a handle for the speedball calligraphy pens they make uh, which the calligraphy nibs have the same type of um, holding uh, or sorry the um, like the flange part of it and it fits so to fit into the calligraphy pens just as easily and because I'm using soft material here I certainly don't need the end of the the um, gouge handle the way the regular linoleum ones are so you can just put it in one of these save your fingertips I used to get oof, very sore converted a few people even a few people who do do traditional lino have switched it's just so hard on your hands if you're listening speedball could you make a comfort grip that'd be very nice if you did a lot of people would be very happy with that okay so I've gone around some of those edges to clean that out but I am going to go and use this one that I just showed you to get rid of the rest. So this is the number two. See that? You can see it's written on the back there, number two. Normally for clearing, I, I use a number four. It has a flat bottom, but uh, getting set up today, I didn't grab it. And this is the one that probably most people have. It's hard to find the number four um, tip. I do like it though, it gives a nice um, clean sort of edge so it's not ridged like this and you won't get as many stray marks. Some people like the stray marks, so it's no big deal, but uh, I like mine to be fa fairly clean. And yeah, so now's the cleanup part. So everything's been carved at this point and so you're just... Uh, spending some time cleaning out all the sections that um, are in, are positive at the moment but need to be negative for the stamp to work. So that's all I'm doing. And it's interesting with this material seeing the black come up from underneath as you remove that top layer. It's kind of interesting that top layer. It's, um, it's about a millimeter thick. And while it does give a really beautiful sort of two color um, result to the stamps, it's difficult to use the whole one millimeter as a way of showing where you've carved because some of the cuts you make aren't deep enough to actually go through the one millimeter <laughs> because you're doing shallower cuts, if that makes sense. So I. I like it, but I don't. I certainly don't buy the material because of that feature. So, one of the risky parts of doing the clean out is inadvertently cutting into your design and damaging something. Ooh. I've done that before. Oh my gosh. You get done a complicated design. You think, oh, all well, the hard work is done. I just need to clear out the, the outsides and bam, you wreck it. Very annoying. I hate that. Okay, so there's the bulk of it done. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take my box cutter because I do want to cut these sides off. I'm not going to sit and clean all of that out. Side. That's 
this side. I don't so much mind the top part because it's um, the good thing about how soft this is is it's really easy to clean out some of that jagged stuff with a nice box cutter because um, it gives a longer blade than um, the X-Acto blade. So the X-Acto blade I use is the number um, uh, the number 11 and that's that's the number 11 blade it's the standard size but um, there's other other blade sizes that could work as well. This one I like just because it's the most common, I think it's the most common blade out there and uh, you can um, find it just about anywhere. And I like the, the angle of the blade. So just cleaning out some of these remaining bits and then I'm gonna do a test print. And before I show um, the material or the uh, that special ink that I was talking about. We'll just use regular ink to test it because I don't want to waste my opaque ink. The more you carve, the better you will be at recognizing the problem spots. I mean, for the parts that you're clearing out, that extra layer really helps to show you where, where that was, so. Okay, so last spot down here. Okay, so let's test that. I'm going to just dust all this up and out of the way like that. All right, now. I am um, just going to use the back side of this a scrap paper to do my test print. And I've got just a light color here for the test print. Um, it's an a memento. And um, this will help me just see if I've got everything, but it won't stain the block and it won't, um, oops. It won't interfere with the white after, because I don't want to wreck the white ink pad. So let's see, let's see how we did. Let's see the dust still on the back here of this. Oh, it's lovely. Look at that. So the holidays came out well. Let's see in the S, nothing there. So it just must be from the stamp. You can see the the lines of the trees looks good i am happy with that so um, if you get this far and there's some stray marks or anything like that this is the perfect time to clean that out what i'm going to do first though before we try the white stays on is i'm going to actually clean this up so it kind of looks muddy and it looks kind of gross and that's because the transferred ink on there doesn't look great easy 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 to get rid of it just that acetone again and the whole thing just cleans right off don't do this a lot because it does sort of take a little bit of the rubber off with it when you clean it so it will sort of round out edges and things like that so you don't want to do that but there you go nice clean stamp and we want that for using the white ink I'm about to show you so this is gonna be perfect to use for stays on opaque. Now the regular stays on is not opaque. If you use it on something, it's a solvent ink, it will, if you use it on something dark, it won't actually show up because it's it's just not got the pigment that way. And if we're gonna put something on this um, uh, green cardstock, it's going to not really show up very well. I want this stamp to be inked white on there. So how does this work? This is uh, got a little bit of a technique to it because it's not like a regular ink pad. Um, I keep mine in this box because it keeps this with this. So how does this work? Basically, it's really easy, but it's just an extra step. You have inside of it, you've got this little scrapery 
piece here. And every time you need to use this ink, you need to add ink to the ink pad because the uh, ink pad doesn't hold the ink in it like a typical ink pad does. So I am going to take the inker and and this is per it's all permanent so you want to make sure you don't get this on anything and I'm going to put some ink on here like that put a lid on this then I'm going to use my little scraper that came with it and I'm going to use that to spread it evenly over the ink pad now if you saw my ink pads a little bit it was a little dirty looking that's because of that ink transfers that I've done in the past this is a solvent based ink and it will pull that toner transfer off now just like any other um, uh, ink pad you want to cover the, the stamp with it so do it like that you can't see because that part is white, but you can see that it's covered even some of that there. I don't wanna get it on my, um, my mat here, so I'm going to put this here and use that because the, this stamp block is actually bigger than the um, card. I'm gonna line it up, I'm gonna stamp it. Oh, I got some on my nail, that means I'm going to have a white nail for a bit. And let's see how this turned out. There it is. Happy holidays. So there are some tricks and techniques to get it lined up well, but I'm very happy with how that came out. And there it is. So happy holidays, guys. I hope if you have some time off on the holidays, you get carving. I'd love to see some of the things you do. If you're interested in this video or more videos like it, make sure to subscribe and you can sign up for my free carve along. There's a link down in the description below. So happy holidays, everyone. Take care.